Checking the microphone. Check, 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 check. That looks good. Well, 10 seconds left. This is exciting. <laughs> oh, it says I'm live. All right, let's press the button. Hello and welcome everybody to the bear and the brush. Nice to see you again. I hope you had a nice week so far and um, you had a better day than me. <laughs> My day sucked, but I am back to painting, which is quite nice. So I hope um, it gets better from here on out. 
We are currently in the process of painting Star Lord from uh, Marvel Crest Protocol, and I finished some parts. And this music is still out. I finished some parts, and I base coated some parts, and I may need to um, get in on those base coats a bit more. And um, yeah, finish the uh, the jacket or uh, cloak or whatever. And get into the boots and the helmet and the guns so a lot of nice stuff to do today and as always we are using camera paints good old camera paints I actually fell for uh, they had a Kickstarter and um, adding up to the standard set and the expansion set they were like already two special sets and I ordered three or the three um, signature collection thingy signature blends and they already released two new but I think they will be out in February or something I don't know yeah so let's get into Star Lord I guess again if you hear this sound this is my vortex mixer and my Vortex Mixer is the best thing that could happen to camera paints because they are so freaking pigment dense um, that they really like to settle down and um, yeah, basically suck. <laughs> so you have to shake them up pretty good and just try to add one drop to the palette, which never works for me. Oh yeah, this is a really bad habit when you use Camaro paints because uh, most of the paints are like safe, but I heard Camaro has some stuff in it that's not safe. So um, if you're a brush licker, be careful. Be really careful, please. All right, let's switch to painting mode. Bam, oh, I love this green screen. All right, here he is, good old Star Lord. And um, yeah, I need to fix the base coat on his boots because it looks like shit. And I may have painted over the blue a bit. So I will need my blue and fix that. And I don't know which blue I use. I guess it was this one. And then we can continue on the cloak and on the bag and guns and whatnot. There's a lot of shit to do. So let's go. I like to thin down uh, my paint quite well. Camaro needs to be thinned down quite a lot. Most of the range is quite... Uh, it, yeah, most of the Camaro paints are really, really thick. So um, thin them down properly. Or you will get texture on your mini, which kind of sucks. But they tend to cover cover really well, so um, that's a plus. So I'm just going in with some more. Uh, what color is this? Um, golden brown from the Danilo Katasi um, signature blend, which will be a nice base for the golden boots. Uh, because I decided I don't want to paint them leather, I uh, want to paint them like golden armor. Got that, I think, from Instagram. Someone did it. The box art is also quite close to that, so um, yeah, let's go for that. And I really don't care that much what's under the under this cloak here because. Um, it's in the shadows. It shouldn't be that detailed. It should be quite dark and really nobody looks there. Nobody picks up your model when you're gaming and says, oh, ooh, you didn't paint it under, under its cloak. Or, or, or. Nope, that's not happening. I mean, it's not a competition piece. Dun, 
da, da. So if you like, hit me up in the chat. Tell me how your week has been so far. And uh, if you've missed me on Sunday, because I was too lazy to stream on Sunday. I uh, normally would have wanted to, but I kind of skipped that one. All right. That base coat is getting there. So we are close to fixing this one mistake I made up here. Um, but I won't do it just now because if you fix all the stuff right away, it tends to get ugly. And there's shit to fix on the shirt and... Um, yeah, basically paint everything first, then fix shit. That's the best advice I can give you. Otherwise, you will go from paint to paint to paint and um, never really finish. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we should take a look at the cloak. Um, if we can add some white highlights here and there, like we did on the lower part. And for that, we need some camera white. <laughs> After the stream, I really have to eat some stuff because um, food was rare today. Uh, skipped breakfast, just had a small uh, lunch and uh, dinners on the stove. So, um, yeah. Uh, not taking, or at least not today, I'm not really taking good care of myself, but um, normally I do. Or I try to. Okay, so why did I pick the white? Because I wanted to add some stuff on his cloak. So I think we can go for a little white on the inside here. Just sketching along. Oh, that's quite good on the button here. Upper part here, maybe. The back. I'm really trying to hit it with uh, the side of the brush. So I get this nice, clean look. Here are some buttons. That's not looking good. That. Yeah, there we go. It doesn't have to be that intense, but on some parts here, I kind of want to sketch it out. <laughs> And I was, uh, I was kind of scared to do that, this at first, but then uh, a good Discord friend of mine um, encouraged me to do it. So he was here on stream, was like, no, dude, try it. You can always paint over it. So I did. And I'm happy I did. All right, these few lines will complete the comic style look. And I don't want to do them too fine. Uh, mostly because um, I want to embrace my kind of style more so. 
I always get told I'm a painterly painter. So I'm trying to embrace that. Yeah, that's quite nice. I can live with that. I could go for the boots now, or I could go for um, for the guns or the helmet. But I'm thinking I'm going for the boots first. For that, I need some good old yellow. And this is really caked up. Really, really caked up. And I need to fix the exposure on my... Uh... Well, face cam is a bit bright. But yeah, you can't even hear the agitator. That's not a good sign at all. Ah, getting there. <laughs> Sorry. It's uh, really, um, really entertaining to watch me shake paint, but. I'm afraid there's no other, other solution. Okay, let's get in there for a second. Yep, that is totally caked. I need to loosen it up a bit. Um, I'm, I'm getting in there with the back of a brush. Um, you can see the pieces. That's not good. I don't want that. And I really don't want to waste this paint. So I will try to, because the camera is freaking expensive. So I will try to get it down off the paint handle at least a bit so I can use it. Not bad. Not getting everything but enough to work with. Good. And I have to scrap this. People say, and I think that's um, that's a quite beautiful proverb, if it's even a proverb. But um, the only paint wasted is the one that stays in uh, the bucket or in the tube or whatever you have your paint in, which is um, quite inspiring, I guess. So you don't waste paint if you use it. And uh, I don't know where this is coming from, but uh, um, oftentimes people get scared to paint the minis because, oh, I could ruin it. Well, isn't a, um, an unpainted mini uh, quite boring? So let's get in here with, um, with the yellows. I kind of want to sketch out my uh, non-metallic stuff here first. And for that, I will leave some parts uh, quite dark and try to work with um, so-called counter reflections. And this will be quite bad non-metallic metal because I am not really skilled in doing that. Um, try to keep in mind which which part is up and then leave some darker parts and add a yeah a counter reflection so counter uh, reflection means there's a reflection uh, on the other side uh, where you normally would not think that there would be a uh, reflection but that method works quite well so painting the left and the right part of a shoe for example you can even combine it in the front or here on the on the uh, knee pad I try to leave a line in the middle and to show the different angles 
I'm doing this um, a bit um, switched over to the side. And now I'm just building up like a nice um, yellow. And actually you don't have to blend that well because metallic uh, paint has quite harsh lines when it's reflecting. So this is quite a good start for non-metallic metal, um, leaving a harsh line in the middle, not trying to focus on blending that much. Um, I can ignore the boosters, they will be painted in a different color. And now I'm just trying to get in like a, a solid, a solid base coat of the yellow. And I already messed up like some parts here where I covered too much of the, of the brown. But that's not that big a deal because I got a lot of brown on, on the palette. And I can just go in later and um, add some of that. Again, ignoring most of uh, the parts in the shadows here. And I guess non-metallic metal is like my weakest technique. I can't do non-metallic metal for shit, but I always try it. Because if you don't try it, You'll fucking never learn it. Oh, damn, I think I need to beep that out. If I upload the VOD to YouTube. Demonetized for a word. <laughs> All right. Okay. Still building up the yellow. And I will come back later on with a bit of the brown to reinforce my dark areas. which should be like done in one code. And it could happen that I just go like, no, that doesn't look like non-metallic metal and we'll paint over it. But it also could be that I, I'm saying, yeah, well, uh, fuck this. I'm not wasting any more time on it. Okay. Basic parts are in. Yeah, that looks okay. So I'm getting back the brown and trying to reinforce my darker areas which as I said should be done in one nice coat Yep, it's working out. So as you can see here, there's just this little bit of yellow in that area and I just get over that with some of the brown, adding some of the brown to the recesses. That's it, and now can add some shine, take some white, take some yellow, make it brighter. And now we're going for the center of the yellow or the sides on this. Yeah, I prefer the side. 
yeah, we'll try to aim for the center. Just brighten it up a bit. Being careful. Again, trying to hit the center. Yep. Here's a quite nice spot to get really bright. Getting somewhat in the corner. And you really don't know where um, to go first because you're so used to like top down highlighting. Um, but the basic idea is um, find a place that would naturally be highlighted like because the sun is shining on top of it and then find the counter reflection which is basically on the opposite side and not always like how to put it <laughs> playing by the rules of the uh, zenith of lighting yeah that quite puts it puts it on the spot well I had to talk all day at work and now I'm a bit um, <laughs> flustered. Is that a correct word? Yeah, I guess flustered. Okay. Trying to add a bit more brighter stuff here. especially on the knee pads and in the middle here. And quite next to the darker parts, metal is quite, if you look at it, there's like bright part, dark part, harsh transition. Okay. I'm quite happy with that. And now we can go for pure white. But the pure white um, really needs to be on point and like the smallest of areas uh, to make it look shiny. So just hitting like the edge here. Edge of the knee pad. And on the side here, I mean, it's not perfect and it looks a bit stripy on this boot here. I can go over this part here to switch the reflection a bit. It makes it look a bit more believable. Yeah, that's kind of all right. Um, I could go for a reflection down here to make it more rounded off or make it look more rounded off. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. So now for clean up his pants already cleaned up his jacket and I need to look for um, my my idea of how I want to paint him <laughs> Star Lord sorry um, need to open up this one picture again. There we go. Brown and silver. 
Yeah, I guess we are going for um, the brown parts now. And the hair is still not done. Violet is done. <laughs> Need to sort through my. There we go. Paints for a second. Uh, yellow. I need some black later on. I can already put this on my palette. Oh, some blue to fix the pants. Oxide, it's not that dark. Um, dun, 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 dun. The good dark brown. Royal brown, royal brown is nice. Let's shake it up. This is so stuck. I need to use my paints more often. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. All right, royal brown. And it's not coming out. Oh, there we go. Just a tiny drop. Oh, I wanted to lick my brush again. Good idea with uh, some yellow on, eating some nice cadmium. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we got a belt and we got straps and a shoulder pad and some gloves. Let's try to base coat them nicely without hitting up all the other stuff. And later on, fix uh, the belts on them. Yeah, that's a solid plan. <laughs> and I kind of want to use this as a base coat for the hair, but I don't know why. What's going on? Why do I have that idea? I don't know. But the royal brown is quite a reddish brown. And actually, at the moment, fits quite snugly into the color scheme. That's, uh, that's nice. Yeah, paints good over black. Getting uh, the buckles. All right, anyone plans for the weekend? <laughs> Feel free to hit me up, plans for the weekend. Um, Oh, this one is quite tricky. And I will have to repaint the, the buckle on it. And no, oh, I'm trying to not hit anything else here. Yep. Getting there. The small stuff that really can ruin a mini like this. And actually, I mean, I, of course, I paint miniatures, but I don't know if it's just me, <laughs> but these uh, Crested Protocol minis are freaking tiny getting some Corvus Belly uh, vibes here. Corvus Belly stuff is also so tiny. Is it Corvus Belly? I mean Infinity. Like, I think Infinity is made by Corvus Belly and the Infinity models are freaking tiny. 
dun, dun. Yeah. Oh yeah, I uh, just forgot. My damn printer died today. Like my 3D printer. Not even a, not even a year old. Frozen Sonic Mighty 8K. Um, I started a print that was quite important to me because it was like it was going to be a gift, and my freaking printer decided to um, die on me uh, in the form of um, the light array, like the um, UV lights, um, no longer working. <laughs> Thank you, Frozen. I really needed that on top of everything else. So this will be, or at least I hope it will be easy because I bought the printer from FEP shop and um, they normally try to fix shit. And I hope, I hope they get this one fixed. Um, like without me having to talk to uh, Frozen themselves, because that would massively suck. Uh, because they don't care about uh, the consumer at all. Fro frozen printers are really nice, really good, but the Frozen support is like um, total ass. <laughs> they are really so bad. Okay, there's something that I will need to fix later on. But for now, this will work. And of course, I will need multiple, multiple, multiple layers of this brown to cover um, everything properly well, there's his hand guard here and his hand shoe or glove or yeah the person who invented the English language decided it's a good idea to split it Boom. Base coating away. I always like to try to do everything as neat as possible. So I don't have to fix a lot of stuff later on. Um, but sometimes you just can't help it and you Need to fix stuff so it's a good idea um, if you if you can't like paint if you can't paint it all at once try to write down what kind of paints you used or try to remember at least because it will make cleanup a lot easier So I'm getting to a good base brown here. Still need to cover a lot of stuff under underneath. You just have to try a bit to find the right consistency. Um, when I started out using camera pines, I kind of disliked them. Mostly because I wasn't able to use them properly. Because, first of all, I did not give the paint enough time to dry, which created texture. And I didn't thin it down enough, 
which again created more texture. And of course, none of that was my fault. Just bad paint. <laughs> and now I have to say, Camaro is quite up there uh, with my favorite paints. Um, can't really decide which really is my favorite paint brand. Um, but it would possibly boil down to Pro Acryl and some um, Scale Artist. Yeah. Pro Acryl and Scale Artist. If I couldn't have any other range, a range it would be uh, Pro Acryl. And if I could have a second range, if I could mix ranges, it would be Pro Acryl and Scale Artist. Scale artist colors are freaking insane. But I learned to like Camaro as well. You have to get used to them. I personally think these are not easy paints, not easy to use paints. They're great paints if you know how to use them, <laughs> definitely. But if you don't know it, you're screwed. Okay, let's lighten up the brown a bit. And for this, I will take the same brown I used as a base for my non-metallic metal. Because if you find tones in different spots of the model, of the mini, um, it gives a more coherent uh, look. But I think I need to go for a mid-tone first here, like mixing both. Yeah, I don't want to go too bright. This looks quite good. And in this case, we can go like the normal painting route. Paint highlights. Skip shadows. Get some edges on. So I don't want to, I kind of want to finish him today. Which I don't know if will work out, but I will try. All right. Highlights. Oop. Edges. Getting there. Yeah. If you don't know how and where to paint um, your highlights, just look up onto the mini from above and you'll quite easily find the highlight places or where to put your highlights. <sighs> wow, it's getting warm here. Okay, aiming for smaller spaces now with uh, the second coat. and try to blend it. I always like have to perfectly blend, but uh, some, some blending is a good idea. And try to leave everything that is dark uh, with some shadow. It just makes it look more, more realistic.
can barely see the race areas here on the side of the backpack. So I just hit them with a really small highlight layer. And if I think, well, um, that's not blended enough, that's a cool trick I'll show you later on. Um, but first, some of the light brown for the lightest highlights. And this is quite uh, a big step up, like dark, middle, light. And this will probably look uh, shit. Right, but with my little trick, I will fix it in a second. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, but could be better. There we go. Utmost area here, side of this. And of course in the front. Bit of the edge. Can also like try to Get some scratches in. Okay. Now for some shine, taking like a really small amount of white. And adding some shine onto the leather parts. But that will vanish in a second. Right. There we go. Bam. Enough for the trick. It's just a glaze. Ah. Taking my mid tone again, adding some of the darker tone, adding a lot of water, dabbing it off, and now I can glaze over all the parts and the glaze will tie this together. It shouldn't lighten up the uh, dark parts too much, but it should tone down the hard highlighted parts. And if it's not strong enough, I can always add some more paint but I will possibly go over this like with two or three glazes so it uh, will blend nicely into each other. Because like we made huge value jumps and normally you wouldn't want to use such hard value uh, jumps except you want it to look like metal. Yeah. And because we used white, um, the white will tint quite nicely in that color. There we go. Don't 
don't use too many layers of glazing because it will unify it and in the end will take it all over but for now two or three rounds should be enough so while this is drying we can look for um this color yellow oxide and i think that's the poisonous one <laughs> to shake it up shake it 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 like a polaroid picture Ah, oh, there we go i can hit the agitator some of the yellow oxide to the yellow I have on the plate to create more of a brownish yellow and with that we are painting over the hair and try to get a bit more blonde out of this guy um, using over painting which is basically dry brushing but it's not dry hard to explain or not hard to explain but stupid to explain and this should be quite enough in one or two layers And while this is wet, I can try to grab a little bit of white and hit like the edge here and there to blend it in too much. There we go. some highlights in and then again getting the original paint thinned down quite a lot glazing over and we have some nice blonde going on It's not that bad. Quite happy. But there's a part of the... Uh, where's my original red? That is Camera the Red. I need to fix a part on this clip. Ah. But now I should skip that. Should do it later. All right, let's go for some gray, I guess. For the guns and belt buckles. Yeah, gray is a great base for that. <laughs> Except these buckles are tiny. Let's try to pick him out properly. Right. Guns too. I have, a, I have an idea what I want to do with them. But I don't know if this will work out. So please bear with me and remember to uh, join the discord if you haven't already um paint for the soup discord uh former podcast of witness my mini uh, witness my minis 
aka Peter and me, uh, now ran by the um, great, great, great mod squad um, around Zara Ale and the safe haven for people um, who enjoy painting. And we have some guests over from the Dice Factory, which is in uh, the UK. A great place uh, that helps out people with uh, the joy of hobbying. Okay, I put some stuff on his clothes there too. But well, that's all right. Okay, so the guns, silver. But I have a nice idea. God damn it. Saved. I have a nice twisty idea for them. I don't know if it will work out. Well, we shall see. Why the heck am I painting on his hand and not on his gun? I want to repaint that. Dad. Right. Okay, silver is on. Last part on the helmet. And then we're going to try some stupid stuff like we did the last time. Painting the helmet gray. There are some serious small gaps you can basically not reach without getting paint on somewhere else. So, gotta live with that. All right, it's the helmet, the guns, and nearly all the buckles. All right, now for some black. And we're going to use some squiggly lines of black here and there. Trying to get to shadows here. All right, make them look nice and used. And um, now for the fun part, let's get some of the gray. Well, it's getting quite. 
quite dry already. You can make a nice bright gray, getting some blue in. Going for a nice blue gray. Yes. Could be even brighter. There we go. And now we use this blue gray as a nice highlight right next to the black. There we go. Yeah, that's working great. Basically trying to do non-metallic metal again, but more silverish. Leaving some areas in the dark, taking some gray, scratching some edges. Yeah, there we go. Don't want that black to be too harsh. All right, more white. I don't want to go pure white, I guess. Still keeping a bit of this tone. And now hitting some edges with it. Especially top areas. I know it's not perfect and it's not like the best non metallic metal you will ever see, but I'm still trying to figure this out. And it looks okay ish. We'll go for the Helmet highlights as well. And I'm skipping the middle blue tone here. Trying to paint a bit and scratching motions. Yeah, much better. Getting some black. Really thin thinning it down. Whipping it off on the towel. And now trying to hit some shadows with it and get like a little blend going. Oh, this is a banger. All right. Um, some thicker black. 
for some parts of the helmet. So like that mask part in front of here. No, I'm not happy with that. Well, we can always try to get some more reflections in. Scritchy scratch. There we go. And some pure white. Do I have, I don't have any pure white left. Oh, come on. Dude. And now hitting just the eyes with the pure white. Which is quite hard to do because his hand is in the way. his eyes are wide the red will make them glow hitting some areas around them yeah that's cool painting over the last part that I ruined here And of course, we are missing the reflections on the buckles. So I'm getting some water going here. Nice light blue gray. And trying to hit. the edges on the buckles. Oh, there I got, I got red on the blaster. That's not what I wanted. Okay. Mm. That could be a bit of a white dot going on on the lens to make it a bit more highlighted but it's not coming off as I want it it's not flowing off the brush that easily uh, uh, better and then again, some thin red on top. All around the lenses. Let's see how it looks when it dry. This is like a really quick paint job. I'm not like giving it my all. So I'm just grabbing some blue and um, we'll clean up the shadow 
on his pants here. So at least this will look nice. It's a quite rough paint job, but I kind of like it. I could go in with a panel liner to boost that comic look, but actually, I think it's quite nice. Okay, I wanted to try something. Um, This is my um, hmm. Okay, countdown. Boom. Why isn't that working? Hmm. Sorry, switching scenes for. Chat. No, not chat. Great, it's not working. <laughs> I added a countdown timer to show you when the stream is ending. And yeah, that's, oh, I just reset it. Now it started. This is good. All right, but I wanna do some more stuff on the ice. Going back from white to red. And now I have a proper countdown timer for the end of the stream, which is quite nice. <laughs> so don't be afraid to use bigger brushes when you're doing stuff like this. Uh, you just need to be careful Mm -hmm. <laughs> really thin red. I just want to tint it so slightly. Too thin. <laughs> Low. Not tinting anything. Oh, there we go. Then we'll need a few layers to properly blend into red. Well, it's getting there. Okay. Let's grab some more white. And I saw that this color wasn't quite highlighted as I wanted it to be. Well, this beat reminds me of Connor Price. I think I think he's called Connor Price. Um, started his music on TikTok and made some real bangers. There's gray on this color that I need to paint over, which was quite easy. 
Mm-hmm. I could use some or a lot of water water down the blue like immensely water it down and put this on the buckles oh this is nice oh yeah so grabbing this clay stuff and put it oh yes putting it on the blaster Nope, 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 fuck, 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 Not putting it on the shirt. Saved. All right, going over the blasters. Well, this one turned out better. Yeah, so they now kind of look different compared to the mask and still kept the value. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. Some more blue on the buckles. Couldn't hurt. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm quite happy with him. Quite rough, as I said. Like, really rough. And they are so tiny. So freaking tiny. But quite likable. So... I guess it's uh, mail time now, because it actually was something in the mail. Um, da -dum -dum -dum. Dum -da -dum -dum -dum. Thank you for backing, uh, for backing our Kickstarter, Champions of Sona, and congratulations uh, to you for giving yourself such an excellent gift or being awesome and buying them for someone else. Um, we are humbled and thankful for the tremendous reception of this venture. We'd like to thank each and every one of the backers who have helped us bring this Kickstarter to life and hopefully many more in the future. Uh, we seriously never dare to dream of such a great success and it warms our hearts that so many of you are as hyped about the world of sauna as we are it's because of people like you that we can keep making more awesome projects like these and of course also keep on publishing inspiring videos on squid mom miniatures we honestly can't emphasize enough how much we appreciate it thank you emil and i think the other one is lucas Bob, um, my champions of sauna kickstarter finally came and i opted for Two Champions of Sauna miniatures. And I kind of want to... Oh no, they are like really sealed and stuff. But I don't want to break this. Um, can I open it? Yes, I can. Oh, nice packaging. I need to zoom out a bit, maybe. Give them... I'm a bit sad that there are no stickers. I always love the Squidmo stickers, but it's all right. There's like a casted by Mindwork Studios. Oh, that's a sticker, I guess. I need it. Yes, sticker. Love it. That's her stick. And some. That's a 75 mil uh, figure. 
of um, Chiray. This will be fun to paint. This will be really fun to paint. Hopefully I can put it aside without breaking it. Because this stick of hers looked fiddly. Boom. Number one. And number two is Atl, I guess. Atli. <laughs> and again, well packaged. Boom. Now the sticker. And we'll look at the details on his shield and cloak. Um, Casting quality seems nice. Some bubbly stuff, but that's all right. Uh, oh, let's look his, at his head. Oh yeah, his head turned out quite perfect. Yeah, that's good. Nice, really, really nice. Happy that it finally arrived. Uh, shout out to Marcus over at Squid More Miniatures, who um, really did his best to change the address last minute because it didn't get um, transferred over to uh, the backup kit, um, but he did his best. Uh, sadly, he had to pick the, the package up uh, somewhere I didn't want to go, but well, I got it. And thanks for Marcus to trying to change that. <laughs> Okay, time is up, people. Uh, let's take a last look at this rough Star Lord sketchy comic y thing. Um, but I guess it's good enough to put it on the table. I normally would try to paint him much cleaner, much cleaner. Um, but for like, I want to just put it on the table and play with it. Uh, this is more than enough. And I kind of enjoy it playing around with the glazes. Boom. Here we get uh, a matte varnish and then I will post him on social media, I guess. So I could finally check if I get my uh, spray booth working here in a new place. <laughs> yeah, guys. Um, one and a half hours working up to the two hour mark. And um, so far, I hope you enjoyed this stream. Um, I'm really getting back into it. This is my third stream in the new place. I had to skip one because of personal reasons. And yeah, I'm quite enjoying this. I hope, um, I mean, when I stopped, there were quite a lot of uh, viewers, for at least for my um, small channel. And I hope they will come back. Um, hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> if you want to hang around, um, only sad part is that Loki is missing in this place, so there will be no doggo cam. Um, only when he maybe will visit someday. I don't know how this will turn out. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. Um, have a nice night. Bye bye. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to follow me on YouTube. The bear, the brush. <laughs>